Despite my having claimed I was back talking about the Mega Man franchise, I realized that I haven't done it much these past months. But this was a topic I thought was worth exploring in a video. Why do most Mega Man stories usually fail? Now that's my opinion in the first place, this video exists to answer the question why do I think most Mega Man stories fall flat? Starting off, this video is mainly meant to explore the Classic series, the X series, the Zero series, and the ZX series. I have never played any game in the alternate timeline, and it has been almost five years since I last played through the Legends series. Those games also don't really fit into the Mega Man's traditional gameplay model, which is why the four platformer series is what I'm going to focus on today. Like most long-running franchises, Mega Man is loaded with lore and characters that keep us longtime fans invested in the characters we play as, as it's the difference between playing as a dot running through a space with identical, but blank level design, and X charging through a battleship tearing through a city to save the people from the Maverick Menace. My friend Twitch over at the Reploid Revo YouTube channel is entirely dedicated to Mega Man lore, and it's one of my favorite YouTube pages, because there's so much depth in Mega Man's art design and characters, a lot of depth that people either miss out on or don't care about. But since I was so invested in his channel, that made me wonder to myself, why don't the actual games elicit this response from me? Well, to dive right in, I think there are three factors to blame. Focus, repetition, and presentation. Let's look at each one. Focus, or conveyance, whatever works for you, is a large part in how your story is going to be perceived. At the end of the day, the Mega Man timeline is a pretty tragic tale of evolution, progress, regression, war, bloodshed, eternal optimism faced down by perpetual pessimism, and so on. But let's start by looking at the classic Mega Man games. Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10 both are interesting since the story on paper contains some pretty dark implications. Mega Man 10 shows that the Roboenza epidemic can take over the robots we have come to rely on for tools and jobs, which I can get back to that aspect of in a second. But relying on automation for everyday functions is great until the sentient robots stop working, right? That wouldn't be very good, would it? Well, let's back up to Mega Man 9. The game reveals a pretty telling aspect of the Mega Man Classic series lore that we didn't know about before. Robot Masters are all created with an expiration date. The bosses in Mega Man 9 work for Wily because he promises them a life beyond the brink of destruction. Gutsman only exists as long as his purpose of construction work is worthwhile. Once these sentient robots have reached their maximum usage, they get tossed out like a toaster. Sure, Robot Masters are limited in action by their programming and the order of humans, but why design it to have personality at all if its life is valueless? This also answers the question of what happens to Mega Man between the Classic series and the X series. I used to believe in the epic fight between him and Zero, but it's simple. Mega Man's societal role as being the son of Dr. Light and being the one who fights Dr. Wily. And with both of them dead, what happens to Mega Man? Into the trash he goes. Anticlimactic for sure, but a sad thought at the end of the day. But both Mega Man 9 and 10 don't really want you to think about this too much. Both of these games are idiot plots where Dr. Light is framed for a crime he obviously didn't commit and that Dr. Wily is innocently wanting to help free the world of Roboenza. Now, I'm not really complaining because I understand classic Mega Man is classic Mega Man, but the lore is really interesting, but it's so far into the backseat that we can just laugh at idiot plots and get frustrated by cheap levels. But okay, that's just a case of lore not coming before gameplay, but what about games that actually try to have more story but ultimately fall flat? I understand that most of the NES games are NES games, so you wouldn't even know what Mega Man 1's story was unless you looked it up online. Mega Man 2 is mostly the same, but come Mega Man 3 and the introduction of Proto Man, and I find it pretty hard to look past the fact that Mega Man 3 is 30 years old and people still don't understand Proto Man as a character and ask questions like, how can X be the first free world robot when Proto Man left Dr. Light? Well, dear viewer, that's because all these robot masters can do whatever they want as long as it's following the three rules of robotics, but as soon as a human orders them to doing something, they have no choice but to do it. Dr. Light wanted to fix Proto Man's core, but he ran away, fearing the loss of his identity. If Dr. Light demanded he get his core fixed, then that's the end of the discussion. Light was an advocate for sentient robot life becoming respected on the same level as humans, hence the fact that he never since demanded Proto Man's return. Now, is that so hard to understand? No but people don't know it because no Mega Man game bothered saying as much. I don't even need to get into the plots of Mega Man 4 through 6 because, well, 5 and 6 especially are just stupid. The fake-out villain might have worked for 4, but by 6 it's just laughable. Mega Man 7 also fails because the game introduces Base to us in the intro stage, never showing him again until we send him to the Light's lab, and I guess Base is a bad guy now. Like, it's so rushed and half-hearted that it's hard to find anything to latch onto there. Again, who is Base, and why does he often have goals that interfere with Dr. Wily's? The classic games are more about the levels than this, so these things go by the wayside. But if you want to know how to do focus well, you look no further than Mega Man 11. I love this opening cutscene, it just shows us a look into this world, the timeline altering moment where Light's research is favored over Wily's, how that has motivated him ever since, turning him into the malevolent villain we see today, while also informing the gameplay as well. 
it's handled really well and shows that while I'm not looking for art house complexity from Mega Man, just a story that gets the lore and characters right goes a long way. The ZX games fail at focus for different reasons than the classic games do, as here it's less about us getting nothing and the lore being outside the game. Here, the games are dogpiling the player with exposition, but not about the interesting stuff like how Reploids and humans are basically the same in the ZX era, and yet Reploids still have these red marks on their heads to distinguish them from humans, and how that's kind of suspect and a systemic problem that separates humans and Reploids, albeit arbitrarily. But moving on from that, the second biggest issue these games suffer from is repetition, which ties into focus but deserves its own mention. The classic series reusing the same villain countless times doesn't bother me that much because it does work for the tone and atmosphere that the games have. And if anything, it's actually the classic games where we pretend Proto Man, Mr. X, and King are the villains have the dumbest storylines in the classic series anyway, so I'd rather just be Wily again and again. No, this one goes right to the X series. We start off with a strong first game. Well, X1 fails at the fact that the game has no story in its game, but all in the lore. But anyway, X1 introduces Sigma to us all, and his whole shtick is that he has realized how Reploids are more powerful than humans in every single aspect, so why not overthrow humans and establish a Reploid rule over the whole planet? It's not unsound logic, it's just wrong morally, which is why X is so passionately against Sigma. But as the X series goes on, the struggle between humans and Reploids falls by the wayside because of Sigma. Mega Man X3 is an interesting case as this game is all about Dr. Doppler having developed a cure for the Maverick virus, but it turns out to be a placebo. Can there really be a cure for the Maverick virus? Is the threat of Maverickism something we just have to live with if robots are going to have free will? Why did we fall for the cure cause so easily and build a town in Doppler's name? Well, fuck it, Sigma's back and caused the whole thing. It's his fault, go beat him up. Mega Man X4 shows how Repliforce is different from Sigma because they don't seek to kill humans like he did. They want to flee humans and live in the world just for Reploids. Don't know why they chose a space station called the Final Weapon for this, but still. Once more, all this is clouded by Sigma did it, it's all his fault, nothing more to see here, go beat Sigma. Sigma starts becoming blatantly tacked on in games like X6 or the Extreme series to the point where it becomes almost comedic, completely taking away from whatever character development between Alia and Gate was there, Isaacs, Think for Zero, and so on. But by the time of Mega Man X7, it's hilarious to watch Sigma in this game, but in a way where it's just like so awful that it's funny. But that's never the intention. Sigma constantly coming back and spouting the same crap every game turns his character from an origin story villain with an ideology to fight against to an absolute clown. Thanks for coming by, fellas. This way I can face you in the comfort of my own home. So, it was you after all. You never give up, do you? Even when we break you down to scraps, you always come back. That's right, folks. I'll do it again and again. I will make X and Zero mine. Now come and get me. Give me a good fight, like you always do. By the time of Serpent and Mega Man ZX, I was just completely tuning out when we got the same Sigma speeches for the upteenth time. X Command Mission flourished in this story department, not because it was particularly great, but because the lack of Sigma allows for the audience to be intrigued by what's going to happen as the villain and the outcome is not set in stone. But the final thing cursing Mega Man stories is presentation. Do I even need to say anything on this? From abysmal translations of games like X6 and Mega Man and Base and most of the NES games, or the non-canon English ending of Mega Man 7 with the Die Wily speech, to the lifeless, boring, and unskippable stills from Mega Man X5, completely killing any enjoyment the story had in the first playthrough, to the sound effects. But most importantly, Mega Man 8, Mega Man X4, Mega Man X7, and the DS release of Mega Man ZX Advent have the voice acting. But where is Dr. Wily? That's a good question. We may be able to locate another energy emission from the radar room. When we find that media, we'll find Dr. Wally. Don't ask such a silly question. I'm breaking contact now. Wait, Zero! I'm, I'm serious! These infamous lines have been talked into the ground. Well, Mega Man 8 and X4. X7 doesn't get nearly enough scoring here, in my opinion. Because not only is that voice acting trash in 2003, but it's also trash combined with faces that don't move in-game and DS cutscenes otherwise. You've got to be kidding! Axel has nothing to do with us. We won't fight the likes of you for his sake. That's quite enough. You need to back off and pay the dues for your crimes. It's time for revenge. Oh, with this power, I'll, I'll never, never lose. Inexcusable. With pre-rendered cutscenes that are outnumbered by the ones in X4 that completely fail to impress. And in fact, as far as 
all the aforementioned categories, Mega Man X7 fails at all of them. Like the story bringing Sigma back, the story being presented like shit, the story about Sigma tricking Red Alert instead of just developing Red Alert as characters. But how do you do it right, though? Well, they were on the right track when the Ocean Group did the dubs of Mega Man X Command Mission, Mega Man X8, Mega Man Maverick Hunter X, and Mega Man Powered Up, with Mega Man 11 also doing a good job here as well. You don't need Naughty Dog cinematography to be a good story. I enjoy the plot and dialogue of Maverick Hunter X quite a bit because it hits all the notes it needs to. It's presented adequately for PSP standards, the voice acting isn't amazing, but it's passionate, and for that reason you have an entertaining Mega Man story that raises interesting questions about Sigma's ideology and rise to power. All this is to lead into the biggest question, how do you handle all of these aspects perfectly, you might wonder? Can such a thing exist? Oh yes, it can. The Mega Man Zero series is the most consistent and best made of the saga, but I was blown away back in 2018 when I did the reviews with the stories of these games. Focus. Each game has its own main plot with the lingering plot threads and lore in the background, like CLs having created Copy X, Copy X's twisted ideas on justice, the mislabeling of the Resistance as Mavericks, and then there's Zero Two, where we get all the lore on the Mother Elf and the Baby Elves and an introduction to Dr. Wile, CL's expanded explanation of the Energy Crisis in Neo Arcadia, but in the forefront we have Alpaiza going mad in such memorable moments like the Righteous Strike failure, with Zero Three being just an epic story with characters changing sides, more lore on Omega and Zero himself, the Elf Wars, grand, well-drawn images that tell the kind of story you could never do with just a text box, and you have an exciting narrative that keeps you playing, even with limited presentation capacity. You care about the characters by the end, getting us hyped up for Zero Four as Wile has been in the background of all the Zero games but is now the main villain as this game provides an epic ending to the Light vs. Wily saga, finally showing us the humans and their perspective on all the wars and conflict over the centuries that happened because of the machines. It's great! Not every Mega Man story needs to be like the Zero series. Mega Man 11 and Mega Man Maverick Hunter X do good work with their own series and characters, but the main point of this editorial is just that the Mega Man series has a lot of lore that often gets overlooked because of the focus of the plots, the presentation, and the formulaic nature of it all. Now, I'm the king of the abrupt ending, but I just want to present all of this to you folks, because I think if we get quality as good as Mega Man 11 for each individual series' strengths, I think Mega Man's world and characters will only be better off for it. 